Hey guys, welcome back and uh, let's get back to the process for layering the hair cards uh, for the row C and D. Like uh, the hair cards for the row C and D is pretty much supposed to be working together. Like uh, this is uh, the row C and overall what I did. And uh, row D. And the process for uh, laying these hair cards is uh, quite the same as we did uh, before for uh, the uh, row A and row B so I'm not going to be doing all of this and uh, but however I'll be uh, showing you the basic process I did for mine so in C you can pretty much see uh, like uh, there are 15 of the hair clumps at as overall and like uh, there's mostly they mostly got uh, one main hair card and six transitional hair cards. It's quite the same in most of the hair clumps. And if you uh, press five on the keyboard, now you can pretty much see the flow uh, for how the hair cards are moving. Like there's uh, a lot of a lot of feathering going on. You can see the shapes for each uh, hair clumps, and at the sides, they're like really uh, waving away from the midline. And there's there are a lot of fins going on. That really helps to create the kind of uh, feel that we're looking for here. And even for the hair textures. Like uh, they're mostly using these uh, the smaller, uh, this thinner kind of hair, hair hair strands, and also like talking about the movements. Uh, like uh, in my case, uh, when I did the hair cards for the row B, they were pretty much aligning uh, in a very um, straight manner. But when we moved to uh, the row C, you can see that now the hair cards are uh, so much away from the midline and like they're having a bit a wild uh, form of uh, movements. Like just uh, you can see here for C10 uh, that the the whole clump is moving away from the midline of the head and it's got a really nice S kind of curve. And again, this uh, C1 probably, yeah. This one's got a really uh, J kind of shape. So we just want to start making those crazy uh, but beautiful kind of shapes here because that's pretty much our uh, hairstyle that we were aiming for. And when we uh, reach the areas near to the ears, like I've made them a lot more thinner at these reasons because thicker uh, like a full hair full hair strand uh, texture like this or a hair card like this was creating a bit of an issue uh, like coinciding along with the uh, parts of the ears so I uh, kind of kept it like this for row C yeah there are like uh, empty areas like this but this gets covered once we uh, put back the row D on it and row D is also quite similar with row C like you can see some of these gaps but we don't have to worry about that from right now like it's it's better like if you could cover these but I didn't bother in doing it doing it in mine and the way for how the hair cards are uh, arranged like how the transitional cards are arranged are also quite similar with uh, how we did in row C. You can always see these movements like how beautifully they are feathering with each other. Like there probably there's the main hair card and like these are waving around with each other like this. Like creating those feathers and some of them are creating the fins. Like here you can see these are creating the fins. It creates a very spread it out kind of look on the final texture. 
Now you can go for even more spread it out textures because uh, in my case uh, the character would uh, even wear a cap later on so I don't want to go too much on my character and as I mentioned earlier the row D would uh, quite cover up the empty spaces that we have on the sides like you can see on both the sides and you can see like how the movements are going here Let's, um, this one and also on here like D12 and also even D14 and uh, talking about the uh, transitional hair cards it's quite similar with the row C one main hair card and six transitional hair cards like you can go again uh, more or less with the numbers there's no specific rule for that it just needs to look good on the final result okay that's pretty much it and now we're moving to row E